Jaya mentioned, right, this is going to be an extension of uh, the same story lineup what we did as part of the retail use case. This is the overall session which we are going to uh, walk through, right? So we'll be using Argo CD. Again, it's an OpenShift uh, GitOps. Uh, open source tool uh, is called Argo CD. And we'll be using it to control and customize our Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster and applications, right? Uh, we'll use the use case of MLOps in this case. So we'll actually use uh, GitOps and understand how GitOps can be leveraged as part of MLOps. Uh, how many of you have heard the term GitOps? Right, so it's, it's actually a framework and it consists of a set of tools, right? It's not a product. <coughs> Whereas we have an OpenShift GitOps, which is a product from Red Hat. Uh, that is the open source version, it's called Arco CD. That's mostly for doing your continuous deployment. Uh, again, GitOps will have tools like your OpenShift uh, pipelines, for example, which is Tekton. <coughs> you can actually incorporate Jenkins as part of your uh, GitOps uh, framework as well, right? Then there are a lot of other tools which comes in. Like for example, Ansible. If you're doing your infrastructure as a code, Ansible is part of your GitOps strategy then. So just don't think GitOps as a product. It's actually a framework and set of tools which you use to adopt to the best practices where everything you do is through a single source of truth coming through your Git repository. Whether it's infrastructure, whether it's deployment of your applications or whatever you do, uh, it needs to be recorded. There should be a single source of truth. You go and update that specific repository and that kind of like triggers the whole thing, right? From the CICD point of view. And it, it implements what you are supposed to implement as part of your single source of truth. <coughs> so if you go and uh, some, some, someone wants to leave, right? And they're like not happy with the way things have been in the organization. They might just delete stuff and go. Uh, what, uh, what Argo City will do is, it will reset those things back in, okay? So you don't have to worry about any malfunctions being done by anyone, okay? Including mistakes happen, right, in the infrastructure, production environments. When I was working long time back, I had made a mistake of rebooting a production server. So it always happens. But what happens is the Argo City will take care of uh, the continuous deployment part. So these mistakes are taken care of, basically. You don't, you overcome these kind of mistakes or you are quickly back in business. Okay, so that's the advantage of the GitOps strategy. So everything is there as part of the source. And uh, <clears throat> so we'll see how actually uh, those things will help you to overcome these kind of mistakes which are being made or some of the threats. <coughs> I'll extend through the GitOps. Uh, uh, I'll extend the story which Jaya mentioned, uh, which is more about the fictitious uh, retail company, uh, which is the Globex uh, e-commerce company. And uh, what we will actually see is, we'll see uh, the GitOps MLOps story lineup from uh, using that as a use case so that you get to correlate with the real life strategy in terms of how it works. We'll do sentiment and uh, we actually see sentiment analysis. Jay already showed you that. So that's something which we leverage using intelligent applications uh, in this case. <coughs> then we use object detection. Uh, that's a real uh, retail coupon application. Uh, which we are going to use in this case. Now, and then we'll have a demonstration. But before that, I want to show what exactly we are going to do. For example, I have this application hosted here. <coughs> right, so you can see me right there on the screen. So I take a picture of this and what it does, it, it offers, it detects what I'm wearing, right? I'm wearing a t-shirt and it gives me a discount open on that, right? So that's the idea of like doing an image detection, object detection. It actually detects what I'm wearing and then it actually offers a discount. Now, how this story plays around, let me just go back to uh, the presentation here. <coughs> so as Jaya mentioned, we have sentiment analysis which comes in, right? So now for a specific set, product set in a clothing category, let's say the feedback is not good, right? Okay, so this is uh, how the graph looks like. So the graph says, uh, <clears throat> I'm having less than 60% positive sentiment. Jay showed the Grafana dashboard, right? So assuming that it shows 60, less than 60% uh, uh, sentiment here, right? If you see, <coughs> so it, it doesn't look good from the product manager's point of view, right? So what uh, they do is actually they want to incorporate a strategy. 
So the KPI for the product manager is to have more than 60% positive sentiment. This is more of the business term, right? Okay, so what they do is they will review which category is having less than 60% positive responses. Uh, the sentiment analysis shows that uh, the request goes to a data scientist team to come up with <coughs> a strategy where we say, okay, because we see there is a feedback which we get, okay, and the feedback says that the product is costly. So let's say we introduce discounts, right? So the person, whoever is coming on site or in store, they will just take the photograph. Let's say, for example, this is the code here. Uh, don't scan it right now. Okay, I just want the demo to finish, then I will allow you to scan that. Uh, so <clears throat> I just want to ensure that uh, everything works and you get a proper understanding in terms of what I'm trying to say before we get into that. So <clears throat> customer takes a picture here, goes there, and they, the picture identifies that it's an object which is, ha should be having a discount, offers a discount, so the customer is happy, right? So eventually what happens is the customer provides feedback and the feedback gets through uh, meeting the KPI of that particular product manager, right? So we are having more than 60% uh, outcome in terms of positive responses. So all happy from the product manager's point of view. Now, <coughs> this is uh, how it works, right? Uh, uh, what goes behind? So we have a single source of, source of truth, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so that is going to be your Git repository. And of course, uh, with infrastructure as a code, with the merge request which you do, right? The PRs and merge request, and the CICD all put together actually forms the DevOps strategy. Uh, now here we, do, we will use Argo CD. Argo CD actually defines your infrastructure and apps. Uh, it helps to ensure that it has a reconciled loop, which it keeps monitoring the deployment, right? So whenever there is a deviation from the original source of truth, it will go and actually fix that thing. So we'll see that also. Uh, there's Tekton, which does the continuous integration. Um, how many of you have heard of Tekton before today? Okay, oh, quite better than the response I had last year. On this, so yeah, because it's it's trying, it's having a good traction, I think. And Jenkins, I see more hands, right? Right. So, uh, I mean, if you truly have to uh, fit into the GitOps strategy, right? Have CI separate and the CD separate. Okay, that's what I try to recommend as part of the best practices to the customers I talk to. Uh, the developer should not be actually running and doing a deployments, or they should not have access or visibility. Right, so what we do is in our CI pipeline, we just have the development access, the development project access. So the Tekton pipeline runs through that. We do the clone, build, and deploy the image in the, in the development only. <clears throat> then uh, the best practice says that you should then raise a PR. Okay, the product manager who wants to say, okay, I need to get this in my production, should go and approve it, uh, provided all the best practices are in place. And then it, through Argo CD, uh, only Argo CD has visibility with the prod environment. It, and the, the developers have no visibility with the prod environment. So Argo CD will actually go and deploy your production image into your prod environment. And that's how you have the uh, new uh, image with the new, whatever is there, like you have new model, you have new application source code, which gets into your production. So that's, that's uh, how Argo CD helps to monitor the deployed application and fix any configuration deviations, right? So you see here, there's a pipeline uh, which we have used here. Um, does this work? Yeah. So we fetch the model. Uh, we basically generate a tag along with that, right? So these are the two parallel tasks which are running in my Tekton. <coughs> then, so the advantage again of uh, Tekton I see compared to Jenkins which I had worked on is uh, you can actually do task-based uh, checks, like you can just run this specific task, for example, building the model by providing input and output, and then uh, combine all the tasks into a single pipeline. So that's a very good advantage because I can actually test the only task uh, which I am associated with. <coughs> so we have, we do a sanity check here. That's more of the machine learning uh, ML ops, where I don't want to have, um, the model should not behave in such a way that it offers more than 50% discount. So I want to make sure that the, that business logic is there in, my pipeline. So I'll <coughs> fail the sanity, fail the pipeline if it goes beyond 50% of discounting. Uh, because it's a model, right? 
it may have a outlier which actually doesn't work well, right, in our scenario from the business point of view. Then we build a model, we tag that image which is there, we set that image, and then we update, customize. Uh, what we do is we actually update the uh, deployment manifest. Okay, there, there's a deployment manifest, uh, which is again a Git repository. All the YAML files are there as part of that uh, particular manifest. Uh, so that's what we go and update. That will go and actually deploy my uh, new model or new application code into uh, my development environment. After that, I'm comfortable. I can update prod uh, YAML manifest and wait for a PR to be approved. Once that PR is approved, the production will have the new uh, code available as part of your the application deployment. So that's the pipeline which we actually follow here. Uh, there are some links which I have provided here if you want to go and read about Argo CD and Tecton. <coughs> right. And uh, moving this to the MLOps perspective, right? Uh, how many of you are actually have worked on the machine learning uh, tasks in your organization, right? Yeah, few of you, right? Many actually. So, you know, right, model code is just a very small portion of making that application intelligent, right? It's just not the model part, it's the whole ecosystem which comes along with that, right? It's configuration, it's data collection, feature extraction, process management, uh, then you are actually serving your infrastructure, then monitoring, right? We saw even today morning when I was demonstrating the OpenShift AI, <coughs> we saw different things, right? We saw the model serving inference uh, as a separate section. We saw the pipeline, right? The Elira integrating with the uh, OpenShift pipeline, right? The Tecton. And uh, it was automatically able to go and create the Tecton pipeline for you to run and get your model into your uh, model serving uh, inference scenario. Then monitoring data verification. So there are so many things which comes in, right? Uh, as part of uh, the, uh, the GitOps framework. So uh, all these things can actually leverage a GitOps framework uh, for uh, whatever you are actually doing is part of, for example, in this case, we are doing object detection, right? Uh, this was, a, this was a, a research done by Scully. It was adapted from Scully. They actually say that this is the whole scenario after studying a lot of customers doing the way they are actually building their models and the intelligent applications. So, uh, so what we, what generally the customers will do is they will have this a uh, set of things which is AIML data and Kafka, which is again making your intelligent, powerful intelligent apps, which uh, Jaya demonstrated, right? Then we have event driven architecture with key native and cloud events. You saw this again. Then we have this DevOps, which has an infrastructure as a code, merge request, and the CI CD, right? All these three things put together, you get DevOps. And with the model lifecycle, you actually get MLOps as part of this. <coughs> now, what products we have used here, right? These are all the product sets. Everything has an open source version to it. Some of them are not part of Red Hat. For example, we use InfluxDB time series database, Grafana dashboard. Um, then actually we had written some of our own source code also. So you can actually go and check. Like I, I created a connector to move the data from Kafka to InfluxDB because we had a recursive JSON uh, to actually parse the data. So that was not available. So I had to write a Python code for that as well. So yeah, there, there was many things which was built and uh, Link which I mentioned, right? The sentiment analysis pattern, right? You actually should go and check that. You can just deploy it in your environment as well. You will get the sentiment analysis uh, to understand how the overall components are working in that, right? And this is uh, the whole build and deploy intelligent application with MLOps. So we start. So here is your data scientist. Uh, as I mentioned, I showed you, right? The Jupyter Hub uh, uh, notebook in the morning session today. I'll show you today again. Uh, so you go and update here, right? Now what it does, it, it, and then push, use, push your code into your Git repository, it will actually go and trigger the whole pipeline for you. Like the pipeline which I earlier showed, clone, uh, do checks, then build, image scan, tag. Uh, it will actually push the image uh, to a registry. For example, in our case, we use local registry. We can always use query registry or any other things like JFrog Artifactory, for example. It gets deployed in production. Now, uh, here if you see this particular loop, right? This is the manifest repo which goes into Argo CD. Argo CD actually does a reconcile loop here, right? And this particular reconcile loop will always keep monitoring your prod environment, okay? And uh, whenever there is a push to the manifest repository and being merged, right? The reconcile loop will trigger and actually uh, update your prod uh, in this case. 
to actually uh, work with the new image tag or whatever you have done as part of the manifest change. Now, if you see, this, this is the repo, uh, which actually uh, walks through that, the retail dev GitOps. Okay, it has uh, your Argo CD and uh, uh, the OpenShift Tekton pipelines. If you want to go, you can actually go and check the source code there. And again, this is also around the same thing. So everything is uh, open source, actually, it's for you to go and browse, and, and if you want, you can leverage in your environment. Right. Okay, so what does our app do? As I mentioned, we take a, a picture, right, of the object and it actually gives you a discount. And that's the object detection model which we are using here. I think we use a single shot uh, multi-product uh, detection algorithm in this case. Right. So let me quickly, let me actually show you the demo. Uh, that will be even better. So if you see here, okay, so this is our, <coughs> our project. This is a dev project and then we have a different project called, this is a prod project here. I'm having two different projects here running. So what I'm doing is this is the dev project. If I go and select this, it will actually go and here and um, say, okay. And then if I select here, it actually runs a model in the back end and, and detects a t-shirt and then offers a discount, right? So this is the model, uh, this is how the source code actually runs here. So I have this, uh, this is my predict function which I'm actually calling there. <coughs> Let me go here. So this is the Jupyter Hub which I actually started from uh, my OpenShift AI. Right, and this is the open image, uh, I'm using SSD. Uh, this is my model which I'm using. <coughs> then I'm actually using TensorFlow, I'm saving this model here um, as uh, uh, in, into this folder. And uh, what I do is I have this, this particular code here. Now here I have discounts being offered right here. So I'm using the Monday CSV data. So this will actually be read I create models out of that and that is what goes into my pipeline and then it gets loaded into my dev and then into prod. Now what I do is, let's say I use a Tuesday data set here, right? For example, <coughs> now it, I need to actually build the model. Uh, so I'll say, okay, uh, just run this, run all cells basically. So it will go and run uh, it will go and check the Tuesday data set. Now, if you see the Tuesday data set, there are some discounts which are going beyond uh, my specific uh, business requirement, right? So, uh, when it gets through the pipeline, actually this will fail the check and it will not uh, move forward. Then we will change this and then it should, I think, work. So, once this completes, Right, okay. Well, then I can just commit this. I have a local Git repository. It's, uh, it's just mimicking the GitOps, uh, the GitHub, okay, into my local cluster. We call it Gitty. It's an operator written by my colleague. Um, and uh, so we use that in most of our labs. So here, let's say I'm just pushing this code. Um, <coughs> the moment I push this code, right, uh, and I go here, there's going to be a pipeline run which happens here, see? There's a pipeline which automatically gets triggered in. <coughs> this is my pipeline run. Uh, while it's running, I'll show you the one which got executed previously when I was doing the test. So this, this one actually does a sanity check, okay? And uh, what it does is it says that it does a basic test and it says, okay, I am okay with the discounts being offered here, right? So it allows the pipeline to complete, actually. Now, if you see here, I am then having, I'm building a model image here. So I take the uh, models and then I build an image out of this. These are all the tasks which are running in them. Then I am setting this image in my dev environment. Um, I, once I do the setting, I update. So I'm using customize. Uh, anyone heard of customize starting with K, right? So, 
Yeah. So there is uh, one strategy to use customize. Again, it's a GitOps tool basically. There is another strategy to Helm charts to use Helm charts, right? So you can use either of that or all of that basically, depending on your requirements, right? I like customize, but the Helm installation becomes very easy actually. So, so I'd use customize in this case. <coughs> So I will use customize, uh, basically it's a um, first class citizen sitting with OpenShift. So I can just say OC minus K and provide my customize.yaml file. It will just go and deploy whatever is there in that. Okay, then I deploy the model in my dev environment. Okay, and then the Argo CD kicks in, it will actually push everything in the dev. Then I update it in my prod. YAML manifest, and that will actually, again, go to Argo CD, and Argo CD will go and deploy it in part. So I'm not doing any PR specific thing yet in this case, okay, but uh, the idea is that once I push it into customize as a manifest for prod, there should be a PR initiated. Someone approves the PR in the Gitty or Git repo, and then that should actually uh, go and tell Argo CD, uh, okay, I have a new uh, single source of truth for this specific deployment, go and pick that up. So Argo CD will reconcile that and then deploy the new um, code or whatever image you have. <coughs> right, so, <coughs> okay, let's see what failed, right, in this case. Okay, it failed, so I need to check. So the, the, it actually said the discount is almost way off, right, 16%, and it had a pretty good, um, okay, clothing confidence was not so good, but it still had pretty high uh, discount. So we are just checking this and if it uh, is very high discount, we fail it. Now what we do is we actually go and <coughs> so this here, as a data scientist, uh, what you are trying to do is just push your code here and everything is taken care of you, right? Care for you. So I'll go here, I'll update that to a new data set which is like Wednesday data set and then uh, I will say, okay, run all the cells. Okay, so here I am having pretty good, like whatever discounts I wanted, something similar data set is there. So I'll see, okay, is, is this executed fine for me? Right, then I will push this back as a data scientist. I'll just say, okay, uh, run all the cells. So this will come in the new code for me because the new models have been updated. Again, this will go and actually run a new pipeline for me. Yeah. Okay, so this is my new pipeline which is getting executed now. <coughs> this is my pipeline one, right? So I think this will uh, pass through because I'm pretty confident that the discounts are not so high in this case. So, so this was about the CI part, right? We saw the continuous integration in this case. We haven't got into the, uh, let me also show you the continuous deployment, right? In terms of how, <coughs> um, so there are two things. One is that it synchronizes whatever is there in the manifest. So whenever I update the manifest, once the pipeline passes, the manifest gets updated. So we can sync either in the Argo CD or we can uh, have an auto sync there. So depending on what is your requirement for your organization, you can set those parameters in Argo CD. And that will um, deploy the uh, new image with a new tag. So you, do you guys tag your images? Or you just say latest? What is your strategy? Tag, right? Okay, good, yeah. Always tag it. Latest is not always greatest. You know, Prakhar used to say that. There is one of my colleagues in Sydney. So we actually had this, uh, uh, we use agnostic D. So all over, whatever you see the labs, right, uh, today, a uh, few of them have been deployed and the source code is actually available for you to go and see. So we use all Ansible playbooks, right, from deploying the infrastructure okay, to deploying all the applications. So you can actually go and search for agnostic D. Agnostic D is where you get all the source code. So even this particular lab, which I have the sentiment analysis and ML ops, you'll find all the source code there. All the workloads are role-based workloads. So we use Ansible roles to create those workloads. And we, we use, because we are into the demo thing, right? So we have to start the demo and kill the demo. Again, we have to start. So we just can't create building demos every time, right? We have to have an automated way of doing that. So we use Agnostic D. That's our open source way of actually creating uh, the labs. 
I think some of the source code you can see, when you get the slides, there are links available for you to go and access those uh, roles through Agnostic D. Right, so, so right now if see this is my Argo CD, uh, there are, uh, this is my dev prod, dev application running here. Currently everything is like fine from the development point of view. Uh, let me reduce this. Okay, and um, everything is fine from the prod point of view as well, right? This is my prod environment. So you can see in Argo CD, it will actually show you all the resources associated with that product, project. Okay, and it matches with your Git uh, repository, whatever you have set in your Git repository manifest, it will map to that. So if there is any deviation, it will actually show you a deviation here. Um, right, so if I see, So it points to the manifest. <coughs> yeah, this is my manifest in the repo. So if you see here, it actually shows me if th this is my live manifest which is there on my cluster. OpenShift cluster, and this is my desired manifest, which is there on in my single source of truth, right, repository. If I do a diff, there's no difference right now because everything is green, right? Everything is fine, synced up. The moment I get a new image tag, right? Okay. <coughs> the moment I get a new image tag, I can sync it here. So before that, I can we can see the differences. So for example, let's say, I go here uh, into my uh, rods. Deployment, let's say I want to, <coughs> I change this deployment. I am running with only one pod here right now. I say I go and change this to f phi, whatever is there, right? <coughs> so it will actually go and trigger those pods for me, right? Here it's creating containers now. Now, if I go and see here, it says out of sync. Okay, this is out of sync basically. <coughs> if I see the app diff, you see here, it actually shows me there is a fire replica which is there on my live system currently. And one is, it's supposed to have one, right? So if I do a sync, it will actually go and set this thing back for me, see? Right, so the moment I go here, <coughs> this is what I had updated and actually it, sh it, it moves back to one, right? So that's the way of ensuring that Argo CD is able to monitor and any deviations it will not allow, right? Whatever is there in your manifest, it will stick to that. Uh, now, uh, let's say, how do you update this, right? So this is my repo here. This is the repository which I use. <coughs> so this is my Retail Dev GitOps repository, basically. So let's say this is the deployment which I was trying to increase it, but it did not allow, right? Here, there's a replica. <coughs> there's a replica one here, right? In this case, for example, see? So what I'll do is I'll just go update directly here. Uh, of course, I should use VS Code and all the best practices which we were taught today, right? But in this case, I'm just skipping it for now. Right. So I'm saying, okay, I want to have three replicas in here, in this case. <coughs> right. And I'll say commit changes without any comments there. Right, so what this will actually do is this will Again, trigger, if I do a sync, right, it will again trigger saying that, oh, my manifest is different. 
Okay, and it will try and sync it. Okay, I think it synced pretty quickly. And here you see, there are three ports now for me. So that's how you go update your manifest and that manifest will actually ensure that uh, it's able to uh, like move back to whatever your manifest says into your actual cluster. <coughs> okay, let's see what the pipeline shows, right? There is our pipelines. Pipeline run. So this is the pipeline which we executed. It actually went through and it came up well, actually. Now, what this will do is actually it will go and trigger. Um, I think the Argo City is already kicked in because we just reset it and synchronized it. Yeah, okay. So we are all. So let's say. Let me show you the tasks here. So this is where we are building the model. Uh, so we, this is where it failed, right, the sanity check. And in this case, okay, we are not ha having very high discounts, so it actually completed. It uh, Once it finished, it actually built the image uh, for the model. So it actually incorporated all the models in and then built the image for that, uh, which is being used by the application uh, to actually go and do object detection, okay, and the discounting part. Both are uh, it, both the things are being done by that specific uh, those specific models which are there as part of this image. <coughs> so there are multiple ways to do uh, to serve the models, right? One of this is this model serving. The other one which we saw today morning, right? Uh, okay, where was that? Okay. I'll show you this. That's where we actually. Uh, can do the model serving and the inference as well. Right, so these are the projects in my OpenShift AI. See here, these are the models being deployed here as part of my model serving. So there are four models deployed in the morning uh, case which we discussed, right? So either you can do model serving using this methodology or you can actually build those models, bake it in directly into your uh, applications, right? And can use it uh, that through the MLOps process as well. Um, right. Then we actually do the tag, we, image, we tag the image for the development. So we actually generated a tag earlier. So we tag our dev environment, uh, the dev image here. Uh, we set that image in the dev, okay, in the deployment part. We then update the customized uh, repo. So if we go here to the repository, there's an update which was happened three minutes back, right? Let's see what was the update. So we actually went and updated the, okay, this was the the one which we changed, right? The three part. Even before that, we had a tag being updated. So I think, yeah, it went off before that only. Then there was this, again, it also went and updated the prod after the pipeline completed. And what it actually did is it updated the prod tag, right? Yeah. Deployment patches. This is where we actually go and update the tag. So that is this today's tag here, uh, which it actually went and updated. And that's the manifest which the Argo City picked up and, and pushed this new image into the prod environment. Okay. Now in this, even if I actually go and um, delete this whole deployment, right, it actually will kick in again. Let's say, for example, I delete this whole deployment. 
the rest. Right. So I actually deleted the deployment. It's not there, right? And the moment Argo City sees that, it will kind of like sync this. Okay. And uh, it will actually move those things back in here. Right? So that's the advantage you get uh, using your continuous deployment Argo City. So killing the complete project also, the project will be back in, okay, in, in a moment of time. So yeah, that's all I actually had to show you. And yeah, now you can actually do this. Let's go and check the scan code. Where is the scan code here? Okay, you guys want to try the scan code and see. Just uh, ensure that you turn your phone to your selfie mode, right, the camera, so that you can take photo of yourself uh, with your, so it will actually detect. Let me know if it is working. Sorry? Yeah, the one which I showed in that particular thing was, yeah, but in this case, uh, we are just uh, fixing it to the clothing category. Okay, so it will only detect whether it's a t-shirt or not. Okay, that's how we have trained the model. Okay. Okay, cool. I think it worked, right? For example, this data verification will be part of your... Uh, data engineering part, right? So the data engineer will actually be doing your data cleansing, data verification. Okay, so the data engineer has to create those particular codes in uh, to actually do that specific aspect. Now that can be part of a Jupyter Hub and you can incorporate that as part of your pipeline strategy. Okay, so. can, can you give a mic? Actually, I can't hear him. Okay, sorry, I was not able to hear you. You are saying that data is in YAML format. Yeah. Okay, so you actually define the data verification is part of your machine learning aspect. Okay, it doesn't. Um, so YAML, what we were discussing was more of the manifest. I think it's done with the question. Yeah. So it is. Uh, it's more with the manifest which you use for your deployment. Okay. So that is all running in YAML. So that is different than the data verification part. Data verification is more about how the data engineers want to interpret and understand and verify that specific data for your processing, for the processing, basically. It's all Ansible roles being created here with tasks. Okay, and then you have this workload.yml, right? So, so that is how we actually, um, so you can go to Ansible agnostic D and then just check it, check how it's, there are was defined for all the roles basically, so you can use that for your deployments. So what we have seen, we have used Argo CD and GitOps right, to control and customize uh, the Kubernetes clusters and applications, right? Uh, running your apps on the Kubernetes cluster, you, we, use, we use GitOps framework to make changes, right? To the apps, to the ML models, and to the infrastructure deployment, right? We actually used uh, tools like uh, Tekton Pipeline, uh, OpenShift uh, GitOps, which is Argo CD, customize and some of the models which we used, right? And then we saw how leveraging Tekton and Argo CD can be used to avoid some of the costly mistakes, right? In the in, in, in an enterprise uh, segment, right? So, of course, so the cost of making a change to your app infra becomes negligible, right? By using these kind of GitOps strategy and GitOps methods. Uh, so how many of you actually use GitOps strategy in your organization? Fantastic, okay. So, uh, nice to see that. And, um, okay, what other questions do you have before we end the day? And be the traffic, I think, in Bangalore, maybe? <laughs> Every time you will actually get some of the speakers talking about traffic, right? Yeah, I guess. And I think uh, I'm based out of Mumbai, so it's the same for me now, okay, with all the metros being created. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Right, so any questions? 
Okay, no questions and thank you all for joining in.